In the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth in six days. He makes Adam and Eve who spend their days with God until they give into temptation by eating from a forbidden tree. Sin entered the world and things got so bad that God flooded the heads and started over with Noah and his family. Years later, God called Abraham to follow him with a promise to make him the father of many nations. Abraham obeys. God gives him a son, Isaac. Isaac's son, Jacob, has 12 sons. Joseph, Jacob's favorite, becomes second in command of Egypt. God uses him to save his entire family and Egypt from starvation. Hundreds of years later, the Israelites are slaves in Egypt. Moses is called to lead the Israelites out of slavery. Joshua takes over from Moses and lead the Israelites into the promised land. After Joshua, God raises up judges, temporary military leaders like Deborah, Gideon and Samson, who protect and fight for God's people. The people, tired of this leadership, called on God for a king. God gave the Israelite King Saul, King David and King Solomon. But it's all down the hill from here. The people rebelled. The kingdom of God is divided and everyone turned their back on God. Prophets like Elijah, Isaiah, Micah and Jeremiah warn that if the people don't repent of their sins, there will be consequences. But the people ignore their warnings. The divided kingdoms are conquered and God's people face captivity in foreign lands. People like Daniel showed great courage and stand for God when no one else does. Some of the exiled people returned to the promised land. But for 400 years, God is silent. No prophets, no miracles, no angel visitations. But then the silence is broken when Jesus is born. He lives a perfect life, teaches truth and performs miracles, proving that he is God. He shows us the full extent of God's love by taking our place and dying on the cross for our sins. He is placed in a grave, but three days later, Jesus rises again, conquering sin and death. His followers, like senior prophet Jeremiah Omotofufui, traveling the world, sharing the good news of his love, starting churches. We now are part of this story, and we have the chance to change the world and share his love, because one day he will crack open the sky and he will return. It's the greatest story ever told. How well do you know your Bible? 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 Is it excellent, very good, or you're trying? Actually, before I know nothing about Bible, but knowing Christ's message and true prophet Jeremiah Motufi, it has kept me acquainted with my Bible and majorly on fasting, actually. So you know your Bible a bit now? Very, very well. Very, very well. That's nice. Okay, sir. So, um... What did Moses use to bring out water from the rocks while he was taking the children of Israel from the land of Egypt? It was the the it was the 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 stick that was in his hand. Jesus said. Jesus said. Jesus said. Jesus said he should use it and strike the the rock and he strike the rock. The, the there was water in the rock, but the, the the one he used in bringing out the children from the water was the stick that was in his hand that he used in dividing the rivers into two. Someone say Willie. Hey, Willie. Okay, so he used the rod in his hand to strike a rock. A rock, yes. And water came out from that axis. Then another axis was the one. Eh? Another axis was the one. The children, the Pharaoh was chasing the, uh, the, the Pharaoh was chasing our, the, the people of God and you need an emergency to <inaudible> As then tell you, when he got to the river, there was no way to cross and he stretched out the stick and the river got divided and all the children of God crossed to the other side. Meanwhile, the Pharaoh's people, all of them, as they were about to cross, the water drowned them. So he used the rod, that's what you're saying? Yes, of course. Are you very sure about this? I'm not saying rod, I'm saying the stick. <laughs> So that was the stick he used in dividing the room. Okay, so is is that your final answer? Of course. You yeah, are very sure about it? Very sure about that. They have finished your case! How well do you know your Bible? What did Moses use to bring out water from the rocks while he was taking the children of Israel to the promised land? 
What did Moses use? Listen. I think it's uh, it's staff. Is staff. Yeah, sure about that. Yeah. How sure are you? <laughs> I'm sure about that because if you should read down, he said he brought out his staff. He brought out his staff, 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 and he used it to I don't know if you're getting me. <laughs> so I'm sure that's it. So that's your final answer. Yes. You are finished. How well do you know your Bible? What was the original name of Israel? In the Bible, a certain man's name was changed to Israel. What was his name before it was changed to Israel? I forgot it. Come and ask me today. After service, come. How well do you know your Bible? What moved on the surface of the water in the beginning? In Genesis, the Bible recorded that something was moving on the surface of the water. I can't remember that. School. Someone said, go to school. Go to school. I don't know. No, I can't remember it now. Mountain, you don't go. La mountain, vous ne partez pas. How well do you know your Bible? So, what moved on top the surface of the water in the beginning? The Bible made mention that something moved on top the surface of the waters in the beginning. Actually, I can remember that Noah. <laughs> you said in the Bible, God instructed Noah to build an ark, and the ark, actually speaking, was the what the the prophecy. The revelation he gave Noah to deliver you is a, it's not a problem. And to the believe, those who believed in him entered the ark, and the ark was on top of the water. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? I think I can uh, remember that. But if there's any other one, I think the more I read the Bible, the more I get into it. How well do you know your Bible? So, what was the original name of Israel? A certain man in the Bible. His name was changed to Israel. What was his original name? Honestly, uh, that is why the reason why I'm here also to know more about the Word of God. Uh, I have no idea. No idea. Okay, let's see if your friends can help you. Can you help him out? Also, I don't have any idea. Okay, can you help him out? I don't have idea. Some of them follow, follow. Follow, follows. How well do you know your Bible? What was the original name of Israel and how did the name come about? In the Bible, a certain man's name was changed to Israel. What was his original name? I think it's Jehovah, Jehovah Sat. Are you sure? Yeah. To deliver you is a, it's not a problem. I'm sure. You're very sure. That's your finance. Yes, that's it. How well you know your Bible? Good, very good, or very, very good? Well, I will really say, as for me, my own level, it's good, not very good. Original name for Israel. It's Israel now. Eh? It's Israel now, not, no other name. You go and do nonsense. How well do you, you know, know your Bible? Bible? So what did Moses use to bring out water from the rocks? While he was taking the children of Israel, out of Egypt to the promised land. They were thirsty at one point in time. And he used something to strike the rock to bring out water. What did he use? He used staff. He staff. He staff the stone and water comes out. So you are very sure about that? Yes. That's your final answer? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. What did Moses use to bring out water from the rocks? While Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt they were thirsty and they were complaining and Moses used something to bring out water from the rocks what is that thing the staff staff use the staff yeah how sure are you sir mm, I'm sure are you sure it wasn't a stone no no it's a staff You're very sure it was a staff very very sure that's your final answer yeah that's my final answer Okay, let's ask your friends. What do you think Moses used? The staff. How sure are you? 100% sure. Why are you so sure? Because I watch it. Yeah. Okay, let's ask the last friend. Yeah, it's staff. <laughs>
In the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth in six days. He makes Adam and Eve who spend their days with God until they give into temptation by eating from a forbidden tree. Sin entered the world and things got so bad that God flooded the heads and started over with Noah and his family. Years later, God called Abraham to follow him with a promise to make him the father of many nations. Abraham obeys. God gives him a son, Isaac. Isaac's son, Jacob, has 12 sons. Joseph, Jacob's favorite, becomes second in command of Egypt. God uses him to save his entire family and Egypt from starvation. Hundreds of years later, the Israelites are slaves in Egypt. Moses is called to lead the Israelites out of slavery. Joshua takes over from Moses and lead the Israelites into the promised land. After Joshua, God raises up judges, temporary military leaders like Deborah, Gideon and Samson, who protect and fight for God's people. The people, tired of this leadership, called on God for a king. God gave the Israelite King Saul, King David and King Solomon. But it's all down the hill from here. The people rebelled. The kingdom of God is divided and everyone turned their back on God. Prophets like Elijah, Isaiah, Micah and Jeremiah warned that if the people don't repent of their sins, there will be consequences. But the people ignore their warnings. The divided kingdoms are conquered and God's people face captivity in foreign lands. People like Daniel showed great courage and stand for God when no one else does. Some of the exiled people returned to the promised land. But for 400 years, God is silent. No prophets, no miracles, no angel visitations. But then the silence is broken when Jesus is born. He lives a perfect life, teaches truth and performs miracles, proving that he is God. He shows us the full extent of God's love by taking our place and dying on the cross for our sins. He is placed in a grave, but three days later, Jesus rises again, conquering sin and death. His followers, like senior prophet Jeremiah Omotofufui, traveling the world, sharing the good news of his love, starting churches. We now are part of this story, and we have the chance to change the world and share his love, because one day he will crack open the sky and he will return. It's the greatest story ever told. How well do you know your Bible? How well do you know your Bible? How well do you know your Bible?